G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you from Moore Art School. Super excited about this week's episode. Going to do something a little bit different in terms of the format. So uh, we're going to do a nice big panoramic uh, scene today, which I'm, I'm sure you'll love. It's going to be of the uh, Glasshouse Mountains, which is a beautiful region here on the Sunshine Coast, where I live in Queensland. Um, so yeah, this is going to be an exciting painting. The actual canvas that I've got here is 16 inches by 32. Now I originally did this painting um, oh, a month ago. I've done a few different versions of it over the years, but um, this is one I did a month ago in oils. It's obviously a lot smaller. We're going to blow this up and put that onto a big canvas and we're going to do it in acrylics. Um, okay, so we're working on a bigger canvas, which means we're going to need more paint and bigger brushes. Don't try and do this on a big canvas with small brushes because it'll be a very frustrating process, right? So let's get into step one. Step one is our drawing. Now you probably noticed from my, my example before, we've got a hillside that runs from here and it basically runs all the way down to there. And then in the background here is where we're gonna have those beautiful mountains sitting in there. And then we get this lovely tree sort of sitting in this spot here and it's a little bit of foreground interest. So it's quite a nice little composition. Um, let me just get a little bit of water on this brush. I'm going to use, for the drawing today, I'm going to use a big one inch brush. I'm going to get a fair bit of paint there. Just mix up a dark. You can see I've got a lot of paint in this, sorry, a lot of water in the brush there. And I've already sort of mapped in a bit of a line there. So let's just continue on with that as a bit of an example there. And the distant land is going to fall through around about there. So notice this point here, just over the halfway mark, I'd say the halfway marks around about there. I'm running it all the way to the end and it's about, I don't know, one eighth maybe. And then this point here is around about on the halfway mark. And then we're going to have our mountains that are going to sit, um, they're going to fall just below that line. Okay, so. And I'm not going to fuss too much about getting the shape of them perfect just at the moment. Um, I'll, you know, obviously work on getting them right as we go. That one's a little bit more rounded there. Okay. Then we've got this, which is really a plug of a vol ancient volcano, I'd say. And then we've got a few others sitting in the background here. And there's one that goes up in a bit of a hump. I have pushed them a little bit together. There's a little bit more breathing room in here. So maybe we might take one of those out or we push this one across a little bit more. Then the next sort of main shape that we want to make sure we, we get right is this tree. So it's important that we get an interesting shape happening with it. If you've done my abstract painting course, we do a, a similar sort of tree on the edge of a hill like so. And uh, it's going to be a bit of natural shadow is going to fall through there. Okay, we'll maybe hide that one. And I, I think I will reshape these. I just want to block in some of these darks to get our darks started. And then we'll come back and we'll do the sky and we'll do this, you know, distant area through here. And then we'll block in the foreground area as well. So I've got the big brush. I've got my blue and my red there. I'm just going to continue with that, okay, um, and I'm going to use, really I want this tree here to be my darkest dark, okay, so let's just keep working through with that, and my blocking can be a bit rough, I don't mind if it's a bit rough, now this canvas is going to, uh, I just have to be careful I don't knock it off the, can off the easel here. Okay, push a little bit out into the sky like so. Nice big shadow area running into the foreground there. And try and the reason why I like this brush is you can see as I'm sort of pushing it against the canvas, it's creating all these nice little shapes. I can tap it, I can scrub it in, and it gives me that sort of randomness that you find in trees. 
if I was using a flat brush, a small one, and just being very delicate, then I wouldn't get that same effect. And, um, and the, I don't think the trees would look as convincing. And you notice like the brush, the way I'm moving the brush around, scrubbing sometimes. It's all practice, you know, like people say to me, oh, Roger, make it look so easy. Get a lot of people watching the um, Learn to Paint TV now. And uh, people say, oh, Rod, you make it look so easy. Well, you know, it's because I do it a lot, <laughs> basically. So now let's get in and we'll block in a nice earth tone for this foreground hill. I might just change brush. I'll pop that one in the water. The reason why I'm changing is because it's got a little bit of a dark in it and, and I want to just keep this more fresh at home. So I'm going to take yellow ochre i'm going to take a lizard and crimson okay and i'm going for an earthy warm tone and um might just use a little bit of water in that an earthy warm tone because when i put that green grass over the top of it and the highlight grass i know that this just makes it glow a lot more because if you think about it red and green are compliments and the more we can work with our compliments together, the more we can uh, achieve great things. Look around that little post there. Now, I don't mind if I let some of that yellow shine through as well. It's all going to add texture and variety. So don't panic if you haven't completely blocked it in and you've left a patch of yellow you know, around the post. Uh, you know, I wouldn't worry about that. See how I've just, I've left a little bit around there. Well, it's going to create a nice glowing effect. So um, use it to our advantage. That's the beauty of having that ground or toning the canvas with that yellow, uh, warm yellow there. Just work around my rocks. So you can see why I switched to just a slightly smaller brush. It's still a big flat brush or a reasonable size flat brush. We'll get a chunk of the white there. We'll get a chunk of the blue. Probably need a little bit more, more white than blue. Mix that together. Okay, now that is, you know, it's a beautiful tone. However, it's a little bit too happy. It's a little bit too vibrant. Right? It probably needs to be lightened off even further but it also just needs a little bit of muck in it just to gray it back and that muck is basically a bit of red and a bit of yellow right the other two primary colors and see that's starting to gray that back right away okay a little bit of red a little bit of yellow okay and a little bit of water just to soften it up so let's just test that now that's not bad i'll just I think i'll go a little bit darker got a lot of paint on that brush so just be mindful of that see how it's all clogging up there now i'm okay with that because i can just offload it on the palette but if you're not sure what you're doing a bit of paper towel and uh, you can pull some of that paint out We'll just run it up slightly higher there, up over the edge, just to make sure that it's all fine. Okay. Now, get my squirt bottle. So this paint, you know, it's getting a humid, back into the humid weather here in Queensland. So the paint is thickening and drying. So what I'll do, I'll just give it a squirt. I'll take some paper towel, right? So any of that paint that's in there, I'll just pull it out. I'm not going to pull it out completely. I'm not cleaning the brush. I'm just pulling that paint out. So there's still some in there. But what I should be able to do now is just very gently just integrate those two areas. Being, being careful not to pull the dark to... I'd rather pull the light down into the dark than the dark up into the light. I'm going to do my sky a little bit random. Like I've done the horizon fairly flat. But the rest of the sky I'm going to put a bit of life and movement into it. So let's get a chunk of that white there. Get some of the blue. Okay. 
probably should have put that in a clean part of the palette, but not to worry. I'll go a little bit bluer to the top. Okay. Touch of the water. And let's just get some movement into the sky there. Here. Again, dark corners. So it's my darkest version of the blue. More white and blue. Now I need to just get a little bit lighter with my blue here now. So more white in there. Just because I'm coming down on the horizon, it's just going to lighten off. So what I'm doing, I'm really just roughing paint in here. And then I'm going to squirt it all. And then I'll soften it in and blend it some. Look into that red. Okay, welcome back folks to part two of uh, painting the glass house mountains here on Learn to Paint TV. Let this dry overnight. Um, ends up getting busy, so I've sort of left it overnight and it's, you know, it's dry to the touch. It's a beautiful surface for us to work on now. I'm pretty happy overall with the way it's come together. And uh, I think as we start to detail this up, um, it's going to look really good. So step three now, the more method, which is of course our details, highlights, finishing touches. And I think what we'll do is we'll focus our efforts in creating these little distant mountains here, and then we'll come forward from there and detail everything up as we go. So it should be exciting. And as we're going to go and work into some of these smaller areas, I'm going to just drop down to a couple of smaller brushes here um, but they're both exactly the same brush this one's just a little bit more worn as you can see and uh, they're both little medium size uh, flat brushes with bristle hair this is way off in the distance so I'm going to push it more blue to cool that tone and I'm going to lighten it with white and let's just get a little bit of an outline drawing in. Now I've got this sort of horizon line established through there. These are going to sit just uh, below the horizon line, around about there. So we've got our main main, or when I say main, the largest of the mountain sort of sits in around about there. Okay, run that into there. It probably needs to go up a little bit steeper. So we've got one there, and then next to that we've got another two small ones. One that, if I just bring that down a little bit lower, okay, we've got two small ones. One that pops out around about there. And then one that's slightly more rounded, it runs. Let me just get a bit of water on my brush there. It's important when you're doing these drawings that you just get the paint a little bit loose. Okay, one that runs into there. Now I've got to just check that I've got enough. So the rest of them, there's a little bit of a gap and then the rest of them are going to fit into that section in. So I think we're, we're going okay there, that's going to work. So I'll just round that off there. So yeah, the key here was making sure that that one was far enough over. In the past, I've painted it too far towards the center and uh, caused myself problems. Okay, now that tone's a little bit dark still. If you compare that tone to what we've blocked in there, um, it's a little bit too dark. So we need to tone that back and make it bluer and grayer when we block that in. So um, it's important we make a note of that. Now, what I'll do is I'll work from this side to make sure I get each of them in. So there's one, two, three, four, and then a rather interesting shaped one there. So I'll keep these ones a little bit smaller. So there's a bit of a hump of one there. Then there's one that goes up a bit. I thought that's too high, I suspect, but let me see if I can just take that out with a bit of water. And some paper towel, probably can't. I'll probably end up, yeah. So I need to get some paint back into that. 
Just made that a little bit higher. Needs to go more like that. Then we come across, we've got a smaller one in the distance, around about there, and another one sitting in front of it. And then that gives us this room to put in this rather interesting shaped one about there, which has got this sort of volcanic plug. So all these would have at one time been, you know, volcanoes. Would have been quite a sight actually to see. And then I'll go just a little tiny bit darker again. And just push this one forward. This is the dominant one of them. soften the bottoms of these into the valleys there. You know, if we mix our yellow ochre with ultramarine blue, we get this sort of tone there. Now, if you don't know about mixing colours, Make sure you check out our colour mixing course. Um, now it's a little bit too dark, so what I'll do is I'll just add in to that a yellow, cadmium yellow, medium. Okay, so you can see I've got the paint up on the brush there, and I'm just going to just work it along this edge, because this edge really is the you know the point that separates that distance with the cool blue greys. And, uh, and the foreground. And the foreground in this painting really is there to set the scene, isn't it? This, this is the drama and everything in the back. This foreground is really just creating a, a frame around it and setting the scene of, of what the painting's about. Just lighten it a little bit on there. Yeah, I think that's working well. Pop some up in here. Notice I've got plenty of that underpaint showing through. Now I'll just add in a little bit of the red, a little bit more of the yellow, and I'll just create some grassy patches through here. Notice I've changed the brush stroke also. That bit of variety I think is really important. Let us now start to form up this tree a little bit. So we'll go to uh, 
little crusty one inch brush here than what the ground cover is going to be. So just keep that in mind. Light's coming from over here, so therefore we want to just highlight where that light would be catching. Take a chunk of white, and take the yellow ochre, a little bit of the red, a little bit of this cadmium yellow deep, a bit more white. Okay. Get a touch redder into that. just some little highlight pieces here and there. So I'll get some cad yellow, a little touch of the red, scratch it up on the brush like so, and then let's just Pop in a few more happy highlights, just to brighten it all up a bit. Not too much though. I think that's okay. I'll put in a couple of tree trunks in there. purple tone there but I don't want it to be that purple so I'll put some yellow into it darken it up a little and so to, on the light side because I want to be able to see it against the shadow tone but it's not popping out that much maybe there's a couple of and trunks and things in there to clump of trees. Okay. With that tone though, what I can do, get a little bit of water into that. I'm just going to test how that tone will look. Just run down the side of those fence posts. Yeah, I don't want these to be coming forward in the painting at all. We shall leave it there. <laughs> um, Glasshouse Mountains, it's an interesting painting, probably a little bit more challenging than what we'd normally do. Bigger format, different shapes. I think it's good to have a bit of variety in the show, um, but a lovely painting and a you know, very dramatic panoramic scene of uh, the Glasshouse Mountains. It's a spot that many, many people in Australia will know certainly and a lot of people overseas who have been to Queensland will probably know it as well. And I think this makes a really good painting. And I, what I really like about it is the separation of this really strong foreground and then this drama in the background. So the, the real subject here is the Glasshouse Mountains in the background. But normally with, a, with the focal point, you have that in focus and sharper edges and more highlights. But our focal point here, you know, the subject is muted. And, and I really like that. And so we've got this strong foreground we have to look over and beyond to get to the real subject. Interesting painting and an interesting sort of uh, setup and design um, of this, you know. And that's just a natural thing, you know, because I took these photos, I squeezed them together a little bit, the photos that we get, we've used. Uh, but you know, that's just nature's beauty. You know, it just sets up some interesting compositions for us at times. 
I've enjoyed doing this. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. And I'll see you next time. Make sure you drop by our website, learntopaint.tv. You can see all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV there. And if you want to see the full length version of these and you're not a member of the Learn to Paint Club, you can take a $1 trial of the Learn to Paint Club and uh, you'll get access to all the past episodes, the full length versions and a whole lot of other um, you know, courses and projects and so on that you can try if you're looking to learn to improve your painting. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers.